There's just so much more to hear. Download our podcasts at DubaiEye1038.com. Let's get some insight on one of our top stories this morning, and that is Dubai's commercial property market getting a boost from an unlikely source. Innovative companies like cloud kitchens, vertical co-op farms, and also e-commerce. That's according to new research from the real estate broker Savills. It says demand for warehouses is strong on the back of this, particularly in outlying areas such as Dubai South. Joining us in the studio to tell us more is the head of the Dubai office at Savills, Murray Strang. Morning, Murray. Morning. So what's the story? So the story is that Although it's kind of maybe one of the less glitzy aspects of the market and, and less of a sort of trophy, trophy development sector, um, I think the, the performance of the industrial logistics sector has still been very strong in terms of occupier demand and in terms of occupancy rates. Um, we're often debating quite how the balance between demand and supply um, affects the market. I was interested to hear Dr. Chris Payne's view last week from Peninsula regarding an actual lack of demand rather than oversupply. And I think, you know, industrial sector actually bucks this trend in that we do see continued growth and, and good quality demand. And there's not quite the level of oversupply that we see in other sectors of the market, such as new residential towers, commercial towers, retail space um, coming up ad infinitum. Item, the, the supply of industrial and logistics property is a bit more muted and a bit more um, attached to demand levels. I was particularly struck by two things in particular. One was cloud kitchens and the other was vertical farms. Now, I thought these were still very, very niche globally and here in Dubai, but you say they are beginning to move the needle. Yeah, I think it's amazing the, the number of entrepreneurial and, and kind of um, first adopter investors that we speak to across the market. And these two sectors of, of um, vertical farming and cloud kitchens in particular, uh, we've seen a, a, a major spike in the last 12 months of demand for these sectors in terms of uh, sustainability and efficiency of space when it comes to producing food in, in, in vertical farming. Um, and also, you know, in terms of quick delivery for from restaurants and, and the deliveries and, um, and Uber deliveries of, of this world, um, access to, to quick food has led to, instead of being delivered from um, your average uh, restaurant or F&B outlet, we're now seeing uh, cloud kitchens um, coming up all over the place and we're, we're seeing access to that, that food being much quicker to your door and that's via sort of last mile delivery via cloud kitchens. How many cloud kitchens are we actually talking about, Murray? Are we talking about a dozen across Dubai? Are we talking uh, um, into triple figures? How big I, is this? I think there's around kind of 20 to 30 well um, well established cloud kitchens but the amount of emerging new businesses with ideas that are talking to hotel chains, restaurant chains, F&B outlets now that have fantastic business plans with heavy growth over the next 5 to 10 years um, I think there's a lot of them in the pipeline very difficult to put a number on exactly but I think it's definitely a sector of the market that we'll see you know, heavy growth in the next three to five years. And from an inquiry level at Savills, we see a, a huge level of growth in terms of can you find us uh, warehousing logistics space that suits uh, cloud kitchens. Well, to quote Newton's third law of physics, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Does this rise in what we might call food tech or cloud kitchens? Are we seeing a reduction in the number of good old-fashioned restaurants that would maybe have delivery as a, as a big chunk of their business? Yeah, I think it's probably minimal in the F&B outlets, to be honest. I think it's still a, quite an obvious um, divide between those that want to want to sit on the sofa, maybe in their pyjamas, watching Netflix and ordering in food from a cloud kitchen, as opposed to want, those that want to get dressed up to the nines and, and go to a nice restaurant and actually eat out. There's still quite a big difference there. I think, you know, it, it definitely adds to your choices and your selections in terms of ordering in. And most importantly for customers, it can now be with you, you know, in 15, 20 minutes instead of having to wait for a restaurant to queue your your order and, and then it arrives an hour later and actually you could have made something yourself. So it, it's similar to what we see on the e-commerce side of things. You know, it's the old argument, you know, are people going to stop visiting shops and using traditional retail because they can order in from e-commerce? I think there's probably more of a concern there on the retail side of things because it is either or. But for the food side and the cloud kitchen, I think really it's just improving efficiency for those trying to order in food. Yeah, people asking us cloud kitchen 
options. Uh, what Murray is talking about, if you've just joined us, um, is what in the UK is often known as dark kitchens. Um, it is kitchens for restaurants that don't have restaurants attached. It's where a lot of the delivery food that you will be ordering will come from. Talk to us about location for that, though, Murray, because as I understand it for the, the model for Uber Eats and Deliveroo, etc., when they open up these kitchens, they want them to be in a specific location to serve specific neighbourhoods that otherwise might not have, um, you know, this type of Chinese or, or pizza or whatever. Yes. How does that dovetail with where our warehouses currently are in the, the free zones? Yeah, I think it's it's this question of last mile delivery, um, which has been hugely important with the, the sort of growing availability of goods and, and, and e-commerce. Uh, and I think that's why there will be a continued demand for a spread of different locations across Dubai. You For industrial and logistics property, I think people often think of JAFSA and Dubai Investments Park, but it's why we've seen continued demand for the central location of Al Cause. We've seen up, up at Ras Al Khor and DAFSA up towards Old Dubai in the creek and I think it's, it's all about like you say closeness and uh, accessibility to hot pizzas um, to residential communities and there will de- be demand and you won't be able to drive food and hot pizzas from Jafsa up to um, you know up to old Dubai and the, and the creek so it's about having warehouses you know, and you would be surprised now quite how lo- how close to different locations right across Dubai these cloud kitchens are becoming and if you imagine the cost efficiencies of being able to run an, an industrial kitchen and and very quick in and out specifically for deliveries against having to to lease prime re- uh, restaurant space ki- kitchens at the back of restaurants the cost efficiency is absolutely huge 30 seconds on what it means for landlords what kind of yields can I get at the moment if I want to buy warehousing space in some of the areas that you mentioned? Yeah, similar to other markets, the industrial yields are high. So you can see yields of um, you know 8 to 10% quite easily, sometimes in the double figures. I think the challenge with industrial property is being able to find land that's on either freehold title or long enough leasehold title for for uh, investor comfort because some areas such as Alcoz and Jaffsa and other areas are short-term leasehold land only. Um, so it's about finding those pockets where investors are comfortable investing long-term, but the yield are definitely there to, to make it appealing. Mary Strang, great talking to you as ever. Thanks very much for joining us today. Mary Strang, head of the Dubai office at Savills. There's just so much more to hear. Download our podcasts at DubaiEye1038.com.